Right, good day everyone. Happy Sunday. Thank you for sharing this Sunday with us. And before we start and worship together, I'd just like to lead you to our verse which comes from Psalm 34. This is verses 1 to 3. It says, I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak His praises. I will boast only in the Lord that all who are helpless take heart. Come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt His name together. Right now, I know that looking around us, there's a lot of things that are discouraging. There are a lot of things that might disappoint us. But right now, I'd just like to encourage you. There's no better time to praise the Lord than right now. And as it says in Psalm 51, sobrang dumikit lang talaga sa akin tong verse na to. It says, unseal my lips that my mouth may praise you. Right now, you might be going through something. You might be going through struggles. Something might be hindering you from praising right now, ask the Lord to unseal those lips for you, that you might praise Him with your mouth, that you might lift up your greatest praise this very day. Right now, let me pray for you. Lord, we thank you for this day that we are sharing together. I pray that we can lift up the purest of our worship today, that nothing may hinder us, no sin, no struggle, no tribulation, and we will look upon you because you are far greater than anything that is around us. We bless you and we honor you today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's go.
and laugh to not fly A thousand men yell crucify As crimson stains to fill your mind You love to hold me with the Drawn to cross, you came to die. A crown for thorns to bring you life. I tear every nail and fill your mind. You locked upon me with the light. And oh,
Let me read to you Psalms chapter 16, verses 7 to 8. It says here, I bless the Lord who gives me counsel in the night. Also my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me because He is at my right hand. I shall not be shaken. Before taking action on major decisions in our life, the Bible tells us to obtain counsel. And we often do that by going to people that we respect the most because of their wisdom. And also we go online and search it at YouTube, Facebook, or uh, whatever website that uh, we love to search uh, answers. But as believers of God, I hope we will be like King David who said, I have set the Lord always before me. And may our default as Christians is to go back from His word and ask wisdom from God. Take counsel from Him. And uh, aside from uh, this the written word, we will also listen to spoken words that uh, is usually preached to us every Sunday. And I hope that uh, as uh, the word will be preached today, the Lord will continue to minister to us and answer the questions or give us the counsel that we are desiring this day. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, we just uh, want to thank you, O oh God, for this opportunity to worship you again through the preaching of your word. And as we listen, O oh God, to the word that will be spoken to us today, we ask that you will bless our brothers and sisters, give them that counsel that they are desiring from you today. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Again, good day everyone. Welcome to our online worship service here at Victory Christian Fellowship to Gigirao. Two things that we are passionate to do here, that is to honor God and make disciples. And you can actually join us in our online worship service in three different modalities, that is in RBC Cable Master, at our YouTube channel, and here at our Facebook page, they tag us Victory to Gigirao. Okay, so we are starting a new series today uh, as we study Ephesians chapter 5. And the title of our series is Life Together. And the title of our topic this Sunday is Husband and Wife. And to preach to us the word, let's all listen from a man that we respect the most because of his uh, uh, outstanding leadership, a man of God. Let's all welcome our senior pastor, Pastor Ross Rizuelio.
blessed uh, Sunday, everyone. Again, we would like to welcome you to our online worship service. And since this is going to be viewed by our Victory Northeastern Luzon Hub, I just would like to greet our pastors. We have uh, Pastor Romar and Chiclet Flores of Victory Bayumbong, Pastor Isagane and Ao Simon of our Victory Bambang, Pastor Jojo and Doc Beth of our Victory Santiago, Pastor Mike and Tin Padua of our Victory Echage, Pastor Jay and Roxanne Medrano of our Victory Kawayan, Pastor Jude and Doc Bia of Victory Ilagan, Pastor Jonathan and Jing Navalta of Tabuk, and of course, I also would like to greet my wife, Mona. And uh, again, thank you, pastors, for uh, providing loving leadership to our churches there. And thank you for your labors in advancing God's kingdom in your area. May the good Lord continue to bless you. This Sunday, we are going to start a new preaching series we have entitled Life Together. It is a study of Ephesians chapter 5. And we would like to have a deeper revelation of the love of Christ to the church. And that will be our reference in relating to others, resulting to Christ-like marriages, families, and even workplaces. And that is where we do and share life together. Now, sa linggong ito, we would like to study um, the relationship of husband and wives, and uh, that is, of course, in light of God's love to the church. We would like to read our uh, text this Sunday. We would like to start uh, by looking at verse 1. It says there, Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children. We would like to jump in verse 21, Submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. Verse 22, wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the, of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its savior. Verse 24, now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives submit to you in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. Verse 28, in the same way husbands should love their wives as their own bodies, he who loves his wife Loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it as Christ does the church. Because we are members of his body. Verse 31, therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound and I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. Verse 33, however, let each one of you love his wife as himself and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Let us all bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, again, thank you for the privilege of uh, listening to your word. I pray that as we open our hearts and minds to you, teach us, Lord, to provide loving leadership. And I pray for our wives that they will also learn to submit respectfully to their husbands. Again, we thank you that as we obey your word, you promise, O oh Lord, for your blessing to be upon us. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So today, church, we would like to look at uh, the relationship of husbands and wives. And uh, we would like to start by looking at verse 1. Kasi makita po natin, Apostle Paul, no? Before giving the instructions in the last uh, chapters of Ephesians, he first established the love of God for the church. Mapapansin natin sa mga first chapters ng Ephesians, yun po ang ginawa ni Apostle Paul to establish God's love for the church. Pakisabi mo nga sa katabi mo, God loves you. Yes po, God loves us. And so in verse 1 of chapter 5, you know, 
Apostle Paul repeats that because that is important and we do not want to miss that. No, it says here, follow God's example. No, dapat daw tayo sumunod at gawin ang ehemplo ng Diyos. Therefore, as dearly loved children. We were described here as dearly loved. In some uh, translations of the Bible, it says there, greatly loved. Pakisabi mo nga ulit sa katabi mo, you are greatly loved by God. Mahal na mahal po tayo ng Diyos. No? In fact, the Bible says that He has uh, lavishly given us and poured out His love to us. So, I, I, that is so important to understand. No? As we look at the instructions of God or of the scriptures on how to relate with others. Remember that we were first loved by God and has lavishly poured out His love to our hearts. And then in verse 21, it says here, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. Again, another important verse before we go to the instructions of the scriptures about how we should relate with others. Ang sabi po rito, rito submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. Dito natin makikita yung mutual submission, mutual respect, mutual love. But my point here is this. That the husband and the wife, as we talk about husband and wife now, they should be under the headship of Christ. And that they should be doing you know, whatever God says out of reverence for Christ. Now that they have received God's love and that their hearts is now overflowing with God's love, you no. Know, they should be submitting, loving, and respecting one another out of reverence for God. It is important no, na maintindihan natin that whatever instruction that God gives us in how to relate with our spouse, it should be out of reverence for God, out of, you know, to give honor or to give uh, praise unto the Lord. Because as we're going to look at the passage that we have read, no, our relationship with our husband or with our wife should reflect the God's love or Christ's love to the church. Okay? So we would like to start with verse 22. Ano po ang sinasabi dito? Wives. O sino po ang mga wives dyan? Kaway-kaway naman po dyan. Okay, wives, this is for you. Ano po ang sinasabi ng scripture? Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. I know no, that many, you know, whenever we read this scripture, kahit tayong mga uh, believers, we, you know, at times still react, no? Uh, you know, wives still react because this is a hard thing to do. But the, the, uh, the great thing that would help you uh, obey this instruction is the last phrase which says, as to the Lord. You know, it will be easy for you wives to submit to your husband if you are submitted to Christ. And husbands, if you are submitted to Christ, if you are under the headship of Christ, it will be easy for your wife also to submit to you. Okay? But here we see, no, wives submit to your husbands. Kasi nga, itong word na submit dito, it's actually a military term. That is to yield to your officer. So, ibig sabihin talaga nito, uh, total uh, uh, surrender. No? I'm not saying that uh, wife should be silent and not share uh, whatever uh, is in their hearts. But we have to understand that this is the order that God has given. Let me just say uh, before we continue that in the sight of God, no, husbands and wives are, all, are in equal footing. They are all valuable to God. They are all precious. Pareho sila. And we can see that in uh, Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. Ang sinasabi po doon, there is neither Jew or Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is no male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Lahat po tayo ay precious. Lahat po tayo ay mahalaga. Pero po, may, dapat nating maintindihan that God has set order in the family. Remember what uh, we have read a while ago in um, verse 31? No, It says there, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife. Here we can see that uh, 
Apostle quoted something written in the book of Genesis in the beginning. No? Kaya dito natin makikita, it is God who instituted marriage. It is not an invention of society, but it is sacred because it is God who instituted it. And since it is God who instituted it, no, uh, at sabi dito, no, ang goal is for the husband and the wife to be one. No? Gusto niyang magpatuloy yun. Forever, and that is why he has given these uh, instructions to us to make sure that our relationship with our husband or with our wife is flourishing, thriving, lasting, and fulfilling. So here, no, makita natin that the word submit there means to yield. Why is that? Because the role of the husband, no, is to be the head of the wife. Now, the husband and the wife, no. They are they are submitted to Christ, but the role is in the in the in this relationship, the husband is the head, and the wife is to support, no, to submit and to support the husband so that they will be able to do the will of God. Remember, when the Lord made uh, the woman in the garden, ang sabi po ng Dios, no, it is not good for a man to be alone, no. Kami mga Mga husbands, nalulungkot kami kung hindi namin kasama ang aming mga misis. At yun naman ay nakapaloob sa Bible that if we're alone, it's not good. We need you. No? You are important to us, wife. No? You are precious to us. At ang sabi doon, I will make a helpmate suitable for him. Pag sinabi nating helpmate, hindi katulong kundi katuwang actually. You know, a partner in fulfilling the purposes of God in accomplishing the task, the mission that the Lord has set for our family. Kaya nga wife, importante that we submit to the headship of the husband. Are we saying na mas magaling ang husband? No. Actually, madaming mga wife, mas magagaling sa husband, mas matatalino. But again, the role there is that the husband should be the head. Parang sa isang organization, isa lang po ang presidente and all should follow so that they will be able to fulfill their vision and mission in that organization. Ganun din po sa family. The husband is the head and the wife is there to support, to encourage, no? so that they will be able to do God's will in their relationship and in their family. Okay? And again, it says here, as to the Lord, it will be easy no, if you are submitted to to the Lord and husband, no. If you are submitted to the Lord, it will also be easy for the hus uh, for the wife to submit to you. Now let us continue, verse twenty-three. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. Now, kayo tayo mga husbands, no. Walang kinalaman dito yung galing natin or yung husay natin, no. Hindi tinitingnan yan dahil Yan ay role, function na binigay ng Diyos sa atin. This is a responsibility. And when the Lord was uh, teaching His disciples about leadership, no, he, he, he said, if you want to be the head, you should be the tail. No? If you, meaning, if you, if you are the head, you should be, if you want to be the head, you should be a servant of all or a slave of all. So, God was talking about servant leadership here. And so, husband, when we say you are the head, that is not really a position, but a function, a responsibility. And that, is, that talks about servant leadership. That the head, as the head, uh, no, you should not take advantage or lord over your wife, but instead you are there to serve her, no? to, to be of help to her. Okay? Now, I just would like to point out something here. Kasi ang sabi po rito sa verse 23, no? For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, is, and is himself its savior. You know, when I was reading this, I think I have to say something here, no? Dahil, ang Panginoong Jesus daw, yes, he is the Lord, he is the head, no? at, but at the same time, he is also our savior. Again, this talks about servant leadership. Oo nga, ang Panginoong Jesus, siya ang Lord, Panginoon natin. Pero siya din ang ating tagapagligtas. So, ganun din sa husbands, okay? Ang tanong, are you there no, to help your uh, wife if she is in trouble? Are you there to help her when she is in, 
in need kasi nga sabi nga dito no siya ang Panginoon ang ating uh, savior ibig sabihin noon nililigtas niya tayo so mga mister kayo ba inililigtas niyo ang inyong mga misis sa kapahamakan o iniiwan niyo lang siya pag siya nangangailangan tinutulungan niyo ba siya Again, when we say the husband is the head, it talks about uh, uh, providing loving leadership or demonstrating servant leadership. Okay? Now, verse 24. Again, we see here uh, Apostle Paul talking to the wives. Ang sabi niya, Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Again, we see here, Apostle Paul emphasizing no, the wife submitting. At sabi pa dito, in everything. Ha! Medyo mas, again, mas, ma, mas mahirap gawin. Hindi lang daw submit, but submit in everything. Sa lahat ng bagay. There is no room for secrets. There is no room for withholding. Kasi ang sabi po sa scripture, no, submit in everything as the church submits to Christ. Di ba tayo, tayo no, as, we, as, as, as believers, as followers of Christ, we submit everything 100%. Na kung misa, meron akong naririnig ng mga payo na uh, medyo tagilid ano, dahil sinasabi nila sa mga misis, nako, huwag masyadong, huwag mong lahat ibibigay. Huwag mong ibigay 100%. Dapat magtira ka sa sarili mo. Pag ikaw nagmahal, huwag, huwag mong lahat-lahatin na ibigay. Dapat mag... Maawa ka sa sarili mo at magtira ka din ng para sa iyo. But the Bible says here, church, brothers and sisters, that wife should submit in everything to her husband, no? To, to their husbands. Uh, ang ibig sabihin po nito ay 100% submission. Now, kung sarili lang nyo mga misis, it will be really difficult kasi you cannot give what you don't have. That is why, no? We first read Verse 1 of chapter 5. At ang sabi doon, you are dearly loved children. Talagang mauubusan ka if you just do it on your own. But remember that God is a loving God and He has dearly loved us. He has filled us with His great love. And that is why today, husbands and even wives, we are overflowing with God's love and that be, and because of that, we can share God's love. Wives, you can share 100% of your love to your husband because you are overflowing with love. Alright? Hindi ka mauubusan. In fact, the Bible says, His love is new every morning. Every day, meron pong uh, pagmamahal at pag-ibig na nakalaan para sa ating lahat na ibinibigay ng Diyos. Let's just give praise to the Lord for that. That He is a loving God. Every day He fills us with His love. And that is why as we relate to others, that could be our spouse or other people, we can always share the love of God to them. So now here, verse 25. Now let's talk to the husbands. Okay? Next week will be Father's Day. So ngayon, eh, makinig muna kayo. Okay? Pwede niyong sikuhin, mga wives, ang inyong mga husbands. Ito'y para sa inyo, para sa amin. Anong sabi? Verse 25, Husbands, love your wives. Very clear. No? The instruction of the scriptures is very clear that we have to love our wives. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Alam nyo po, yung mga lalaki, syempre, when they were uh, single, syempre, ang nakasikaso lang nila, yung sarili nila. But now that they are married, no, the Lord has to instruct them to love their wife. And papaano daw? As Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Paano ba minahal ng Panginoong Jesus ang iglesia? Sabi doon, Christ, no, Jesus gave himself up for her. You know, I, I'm, I'm reminded of Romans chapter 5 verse 8. Ang sabi po doon, but God showed His love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Mga mister, are you willing to die for your wife? That's hard, but that is the instruction because 
as Christ loved the church, that is the same degree we should also love our wife. Now, makikita natin dito that the Lord Jesus loved us unconditionally. Sabi ito, while we were still sinners, nung tayo ay pasaway pa, namatay na ang Panginoong Jesus para sa atin. Ganun ang pagmamahal niya. It is unconditional. Ganun din po sa atin, no, mga husbands. As we, will, uh, as, we, as we love our wife, it should be unconditional. Kasi kung minsan ang rason natin, you know, kasi nagger siya, kasi uh, uh, iba ng ugali niya, iba na rin ang anyo niya. But you know, it doesn't matter. Okay? It doesn't matter. What is important is you know the instruction. Because as the Lord Jesus has loved us unconditionally, we should also love our wife unconditionally. Okay, kahit may mga imperfections ang mga misis natin, kahit may mga attitude problem kung minsan, because reality is we also have our imperfections and we also have our attitude problems, but the instruction is so clear that we have to love unconditionally our wife. Agri ba kayo dyan, mga wife? You don't have to look at our reasons not to love them, but you have to look at the instruction of the Lord no? And the instruction is, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Okay? Then, it says here in verse 26, that He might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that He might present the church to Himself splendor in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy without blemish. Here, we see spiritual leadership in action. Kung ganun ang ginagawa ng Panginoong Jesus sa kanyang iglesia, ganun din dapat ang gawin ng husband, no? That we have to lead them to Christ likeness. And how can we lead them by uh, in, in Christ likeness by setting the example as the Lord has done, no? We have no uh, although kung minsan tinasabi natin mas spiritual ang ating wife but that, that that should not be an excuse for us not to provide spiritual leadership. We have to set the example of having the character of God. You know, one thing I do and I deliberate do deliberately do this pag kami may misunderstanding ni Mona at uh, kung minsan, ano, uh, well, to be honest, kung minsan, it becomes uh, passionate. No? And, and at the end, I have to make the decision no, to humble myself and just apologize. And just say sorry to my wife. I have to set the example of humility no? and, um, and uh, forgiveness. And I, you know, when you do that, you set the example of being Christ-like. All right, that is our responsibility. We have to be active in the ministry. All right, we cannot be an absentee uh, leader here. We have to be right on track, setting an example for our wife and even our children to follow, in prayer, in reading the scriptures, in listening to the word in attending church, in being active in the ministry, we have to lead our wife and our, of course, our whole family to the Lord. Amen? Now, in verse 28, ano po ang sinasabi doon? In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. Inuulit-ulit ni Apostle Paul yung instruction to provide loving leadership. And how are we going to do that? Ang sabi niya dito, you have to love your wife as you have loved your own body. Sabi doon, he who loves his wife loves himself. Verse 29, for no one ever hated his own flesh but nourishes and cherishes it just as Christ does the church. This is so important here, no? This is, uh, this is so important that the husband should nourish and cherish his wife. Ang, sa ibang translation, ang sabi doon, must feed and take care of his wife. Kaya nga tayo, no, mga lalaki, no, we should also provide sacrificial uh, love here. No? 
unconditional love and sacrificial love. Now, tayo, alam, just like what I've said, tayo mga lalaki, when we were single, you know, we take care of ourselves. We spoil ourselves, right? You know, if we are hungry, we eat. When we are tired, we take a rest, we sleep. If we want to enjoy life, we, we, go, we go to uh, recreation and uh, sports. You know, that is to pamper ourselves, you know. Uh, so now that we are buried, Apostle Paul is saying that we also have to love our wife as we have loved our body. Ganon, dapat, ano, na hindi lang uh, you're, you're no longer uh, concerned about your own interest only but the interest of your wife. In fact, nauna dapat na asikasuhin mo yung mga needs ng misis mo. And it says here that you have to nourish and cherish. Sa ibang translation nga, feed and take care. So dito pumapasok yung you have to work to provide. Husbands, that is our role. To work hard so that we can provide for our wife and for our family, for our children. That's why it's, you know, in the Bible, it says there that uh, when God gave Abraham the garden, ang instruction ni God ay to work at it and take care of it. Work is not a product of the curse of sin, no. From the beginning, when God gave the blessing to Abraham, He said, work at it and take care of it. So, ganun din sa atin. Husbands, we have to work hard and we have to provide for our wife. Now, alam ko po ngayon, may mga iba't ibang situation na tayo. No? Kung minsan, uh, yung business ang nagtatrabaho and because of some reason, uh, sa bahay lang yung mister. But that should not be an excuse for husbands to be lazy and not working. Kahit ikaw ay nasa bahay, you have to be working so hard, taking care of everything in the house. Because we are wired to work and we are wired to provide for our wife. And so, you know, let's believe God na ikaw ay magkatrabaho. No? Kung, kung ikaw man ay na-lay off and all, you know, let's just believe God for a miracle that God will give you uh, unemployment or your own business. Because we are all wired to work. At kung ang sitwasyon mo man ngayon ay, ay parang house ban ka, that should not be an excuse for you to be lazy or not working. You work hard in that house. Cleaning, fixing, everything. Cooking, taking care of the kids. Because we are wired to work and to provide for our family. And then it says here, no, not just nourish, but to cherish. It's also important that you uh, uh, be, uh, be aware of the dreams and plans of your wife. No, kung ano yung kanyang, hindi lang kung ano yung need niya, but even your wants. Kung kaya naman, eh, bigyan mo rin siya ng pang-shopping niya o pang-spa o pang-ayos uh, pang niya ng sarili niya because we are here to cherish her. No? Pa, you know, for, for her to grow and to glow. And believe God no? that for you also to, to, to have uh, that, that um, provision so that you can also meet no, not just the needs, but even you know the wants of your wife, because you are there to nourish her and to, uh, for her to uh, be cherished by you. Okay, kumbinsan gusto niyang umuwi sa kanyang mga sa kanyang pamilya to visit and all. Yung pagbigyan natin, no, kumbinsan gusto niyang uh, lumabas with uh, her friends. Pagbigyan natin. No, because you, you, para makita niya na you are no lo, you're not just concerned about yourself, but you're also concerned about her, that you love her and you would like to nourish her and cherish her, uh, just as Christ does the church. Amen? Now, as we continue, again, we looked at uh, verse uh, 30, ang sabi rito, because we are members of his body. Now, verse 31. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Now, let me just say something here no, about the singles. Kasi itong, itong preaching na to, it's not only for married people. Kung ikaw ay single at nakikinig, you know, take notes because this is the best time for you to prepare. Okay, so that pag napasok mo ang relasyon, maging husband or wife, Kahit papano, no, you have already prepared yourself. 
Now, it says here, no? therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother. Let me just say something here that the Lord did not say, therefore, a boy shall leave his father and mother. So, so men, mga lalaki, you have to listen. You have to mature and grow. Ang gusto ni Lord na pumapasok sa, sa, sa kasal o sa married life ay mga men at hindi boys. So we have to grow up. We have to be responsible before we enter the married life. At kayo naman mga babae, no? pag naghahanap kayo ng mapapangasawa nyo, no? you look for a man and not a boy. And again, it doesn't matter kung ano yung edad. May mga matatanda na pero ang ugali nila parang bata pa rin. That's why kayong mga babae, wag lang yung guwapo, wag lang yung mayaman, kundi may karakter ba ng manhood yung inyong mapapangasawa. Because at the end of the day, no, this counts. Because the Bible says, no, God said, therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife. And the two shall become one flesh. The goal of God, no, the purpose of God for this married life is for the husband and the wife to be one. From the beginning to end. No, for them to be one, living together forever. No, kaya nga, you know, God is giving us these instructions because as we obey, we will be blessed. Now, there, may, there might be a question, sino ba, Pastor, ang mauna? To, to apply the word, yung babae ba o yung lalaki? Well, the Bible says, you just apply the word. Amen? Husbands provide loving leadership and wives submit respectfully. Okay? Because this is what the Bible says. No? And here we will see that as we obey the word, no, we will have a thriving, wonderful, and fulfilling married life. Now, in verse 32, makita natin, you know, this mystery is profound. And I am saying that it is it refers to Christ and the church. As I start to end, makita natin dito no, that yes, it's a mystery indeed for a man and a woman to be united as one. But Apostle Paul no, referred to another mystery that is more profound and that is the love of Christ to the church. And why is, why is he saying this? Because that will be our basis of loving our spouse. And that our relationship should reflect the love of Christ to the church. Kaya nga, no, when I was reading this, and when I was studying this, you know, I, I, I first uh, preached it to myself. Because I, you know, as I preach to you, you know, I am also learning. No? I also am uh, studying so that I can also apply the word. Okay? Because I know I am still work in progress. No? Kailangan ko ding matuto so that I can also apply the word more. And it says here no, that the, the, the love of Christ to the church should be our example and that our married life should reflect the love of Christ to the church. And then in verse 33, may nabanggit lang ulit dito, about the wife, no? Uh, let each one of you love his wife, okay? Inulit-ulit yung ating dapat gawin mga, mga husbands, okay? That is to love our wife and for the wife to respect her husband. Let me just share, share something about this, about respecting uh, your husband, you know? Kung minsan kasi pag tayo nagkikita-kita, pag kayo nagkikita-kita ng mga amiga nyo, there are times, you know, unknowingly, we put down our husband. But, you know, uh, in a study made, no, ang mga husband, ang unang need nila is honor. Kaya nga, wife, I encourage you to honor your husband. Look for, for things na pwede niyong uh, masabi sa kanila. You know, one thing uh, good about my wife she is my number one fan. Kung minsan, no, I, I, I get discouraged because uh, of not uh, preaching the word well. Parang feeling ko, parang hindi ko na-preach yung word ng maayos. But she's always there saying, hindi, na-bless ako sa word. Gusto ko nga, i-video mo yan. Eh. Kaya nga ngayong pandemic, natupad yung kanyang dream na ma-video yung aking mga preaching. Talagang, eh, talagang number one fan ko siya. She encourages me. 
you know, when I, uh, I have an appointment, you know, she, she wakes up early in the morning to prepare b- breakfast, you know, to, to iron my clothes. And, 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 and uh, again, no, the secret of that maybe is because I have provided loving leadership. And that's a cycle. When, you, when men, husbands provide loving leadership, the wife will submit respectfully. So as I close, church, maybe you're, you're here, no? husband or wife, and you're having problems with your uh, uh, married life. You know, God wants to bless you. I just like what I've said, it is His purpose that you become one forever and that He is a Savior. At kung kailangan ng tulong ang inyong relasyon bilang mag the Lord Jesus is ever willing to restore that relationship, to you know, fill your hearts with love so that you will be able to love one another. You just have to surrender your life to the Lord that you should mutually submit not only to one another but to God as our head, to the Lord Jesus as the head of the church. And I believe that He's going to restore relationships. He is going to heal broken hearts, heal wounded hearts, and make that relationship wonderful again. And if you're here also and you realize you don't have the love of God in your heart, you've been living for yourself, you know, living in sin, but God loves you and He wants to fill your heart with love. The only thing you have to do is to submit your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to pray for you first and then I'll pray for the husbands and the wives. Why don't we all bow our heads and pray? Lord, again, thank you for your love. And if you're here and you want to receive the love of God, you may be single or married, but you realize you don't have the love of God. You're empty. You feel empty because the love of God is not in you. I want you to repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying on the cross to pay the penalty of my sins and so that I may have a new life, a fresh start. Lord, today, I open my heart to you. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for dying on the cross to pay the penalty of my sins. And today, I ask you that you forgive me of my sins. I commit myself to follow you for the rest of my life. Thank you for the forgiveness. Thank you for the gift of eternal life. Secondly, I want to pray for the husband, for the wife. If you have, if you're having problems, I want to pray for you. Why don't we all bow our heads and pray? Lord, I thank you for the husbands and the wives that are here. Lord, I know that you, your goal in your heart, your desire is to bless them, for them to have a wonderful, thriving, fulfilling, and successful uh, married life. So, Lord, right now, bless them in the name of Jesus. Fill their hearts with love. Overflow their hearts with your love so that, Lord, they will uh, continue to love one another. I pray, Lord Jesus, na kung meron man mga problema, Lord, let, let there be forgiveness in their hearts. I pray that they will forgive one another. I pray, O oh Lord, that you just cause them to serve one another and just, Lord, cherish one another. I pray, O God, for understanding. I pray, O Lord God, that uh, all uh, the husbands and even the wives, Lord, will just uh, uh, know, Lord, to submit to you. And Lord, be, be, be under your Lordship, Jesus, so that it will be easy for them, Lord, to follow your instructions. Thank you that it is your desire to have order in the family. It is your desire for husbands and wives to fulfill their roles, their functions, so that our married life will be fulfilling and successful. Bless them today, Lord, in Jesus' name. Doublefold blessing to be upon the husbands and the wives today. Lord, I also pray for the singles that even as they prepare for their married life, I pray, Lord God, that you mature them, let them grow and learn from you. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.
Real Life exists to honor God and empowering the underprivileged youth of the Philippines through educational assistance, character formation, and leadership development. Our passion is not just to provide education, but also to see lives, families, and communities transformed through hope and education. We currently have 893 high school and college scholars in 74 Real Life centers all over the Philippines. The support we extend to our real life scholars enables them to help not just their families, but also others who are in need. This help make a difference in our society and nation. 
Let's listen to the stories of our alumni who are now managing their own businesses and living with godly values. I was 10 years old when my father became sick. Nawalan kami ng income, source of income. Yung hirap na dinanas ko, yung, yung sa school na not being able to have yung allowance, naglalakad pa puntang school, and then walang mga basic needs sa school, even yung books, uniforms, and yung notebooks. Uh, we can afford that. So for four years, Nasa summer job ko ako, ibig sabihin ko kailangan ko pang mag-serve, parang kailangan ko paghirapan para magkaroon po ako ng tuition at saka baon ko. This was also the reason na my sister, my second sister was put up for adoption to my aunt. More than the financial needs ko na pinibigay ng real life, they taught us and mold us uh, our character and at present, actually, uh, nandun pa rin yung sa puso at isip ko yung mga dinurot ng life sa akin yun. Most especially po in the area of faith and integrity and also in excellence. As of now, I am working po as a social worker po under sa adoption program po ng DSWD. Kami po yung obliged para maghanap po ng families para sa mga batang ito po. Napili ko po yung profession na ito po because naging mahirap po yung life ko po. So, I want to help other who are also uh, in need and vulnerable po uh, ma-improve yung well-being nila. Throughout the years po, sa lahat ng struggles na naranasan ko po, I always go back to God. Kung ano po yung nare-receive ko from God, Church, yun din po yung pinapafeel ko sa kanila because I believe po mas permanent po yung pinapafeel mo sa kanila yung love and grace ni God. To all the real life partners, thank you po sa inyong support, sa paniniwala po sa mga young students and for investing for the next generation po. Thank you po kahit na hindi nyo po kami nakikita, you, you invest in us, you believe in us po. And most of all, I want to thank um, uh, God for for being faithful po sa aming family, for being our great provider, for being our strength po sa lahat ng pinagdaan at po looking back, hindi ko po makakayanan kung wala po si Lord. Like Naomi, we pray that our scholars will one day use their platforms to give back the help they have received and more. At Real Life, we enable them to bless others and make a difference. Thank you for your dedication and commitment to help our scholars. The seeds of faith you sow multiply to families, communities, and the nation. Let us continue to change the life and change the nation. If you want to know more about real life or would like to know how you can be part of God's mission, Join us at Real Life Talk via Zoom this coming July. A Real Life Talk is an intimate 60-minute event where you can learn more about Real Life, its vision, and how you can support Real Life and its scholars. To sign up for a Real Life Talk, please fill out the sign-up form by scanning the QR code or visiting the bit.ly link flash on the screen. A development office representative will get in touch with you soon after to give you the details about the Real Life Talk this coming July. Whether you're already a Real Life partner or believing God to be one this year, we want to thank you for your heart. We're better together, so let's do our part to change life and change this nation. Thank you, Pastor Ross, for sharing us a very powerful message. For sure, you mga single men and women like me na nakinig with your preaching were encouraged. So for our giving of tithes and offering, read with me Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. It says here, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. So what we can learn with the, with the passages of scriptures that we have read is that these blessings are number one, from God, and number two is our, or our spiritual, from God and our spiritual. So all the blessings, we all know that all the blessings that we receive, we are receiving 
are from God. Doon sa verse na binasa natin, balikan lang natin, di ba? Sabi niya, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us. Who has blessed us? Who blessed us? It's God Himself, God the Father Himself. And when God blesses His people as His children, we are improved or they are improved, helped, and strengthened. So, in ibig sabihin or in other words, they are better off than they were before. Church, God, diba, let's uh, re be reminded that God is the ultimate cause, the ultimate source of everything. He is the giver, the provider of what we need to receive and keep. Okay, so with that, okay, with that, we glorify Him in His nature and attributes. Sa NLT Bible Translation, ang sabi dun, all praise be to God, all, all praise to God. All praise to God. So, sinasabi ni Apostle Paul that we have to praise God of everything. For He is giving us everything that we need. So, we are speaking well of His greatness and His goodness. What we are saying here, or Apostle Paul is saying here, is we simply worship Him as an appreciation or as an appropriate response to His greatness and His love for us. Okay, and sa pangalawa, these blessings are spiritual. Sabi nga dun, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing the heavenly in the heavenly places. So what are the blessings? Diba? What are the blessings or what are some of the blessings that we receive from God? Okay, this is spiritual blessings sa sinasabi sa verse na to. We can see that. In uh, verses 4 to 13, kung uh, tuloy-tuloy natin babasahin doon, some of you, I'm just uh, going to read with you some of it. Sabi niya, in Christ, you were predestined to adoption. In Christ, you are accepted or we are accepted in the one He loves. In Christ, you have redemption through His blood. In Christ, you have the riches of His grace. In Christ, He has made known to you the mystery of His will. In Christ, you have eternal inheritance. So these are some of our spiritual blessings and privilege now. And uh, just as God alone is the source of spiritual blessings, so in Christ is the only access to them. Therefore, if you are in Christ, remember this church, if you are in Christ, you can enjoy the blessings. You can enjoy the blessings. And since... God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Let us use our material blessings to advance the gospel in order that the peop that people may know that God has purchased us for them through Christ. Okay, so let us pray. Lord, thank you for the overflowing abundance that has come and that they will come no matter the circumstances today and tomorrow. Thank you, Lord, that we will not only be blessed, but we will also be a blessing in our world and to our world. Lord, we ask, we ask you, Lord, for miracles, miracles for jobs, miracles for our businesses. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So, there are uh, three ways for us to give our tithes and offering. Unang-una po, you can uh, drop your tithes and offering from uh, 10 a.m. to uh, 5 p.m. sa Lighthouse, uh, Luna Street, dun po sa second floor of the Home and Office Furniture. Or dito at the Victory Building, Bagay Road, second floor, just in front of the kids' room. So, pangalawa po, you can also give through... Uh, direct deposit or bank transfer so just message me for more details regarding this option and uh, the third one or the lastly you can uh, give also through gcash ang tangi nyo lang pong gagawin ay scan nyo po yung uh, QR code posted sa ating uh, victory to gigaraw page and send us a screenshot of the transaction done through a private message to victory to gigaraw so, the giving of the tithes and offerings are uh, for victory members only. 
At kung ito ay ang uh, una niyong pagkakataon po na makasama namin kayo sa aming Sunday uh, service or online Sunday service, hindi po kayo required magbigay. But if you want to do so, if you want to give, may we pray that our good Lord will richly bless you. So thank you very much for your heart of generosity. God bless you always. Church, as we end this uh, worship service, let me just declare this prayer of blessing to all of you found in Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 to 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Have a fruitful week in Jesus' name. Welcome to our Sunday service. Are you ready to worship? Let's remove all distractions and focus our heart and attention to God. Let's sing this song. John 15 verse 12 this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you our family is a wonderful gift from God and that includes our siblings or our brothers and sisters and as gifts given to us we need to value them even if most of the time we may have fights over who will wash the dishes who will use the computer who will throw the trash or who will go to the bathroom first? May we be reminded of the command that God has given us to love them unconditionally, just as God loves us unconditionally. Let us all pray. Lord, thank you so much for your great love. Thank you that because of your unconditional love for us, we can love others the same way. Help us to love our brothers and sisters our family, our friends. May we be an extension of your hands and feet to them. May they feel your love through us. And we commit this time of worship to you. We love you. 
In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Another way to worship God is through our giving. So you may give your tithes and offering by following the instructions flashed on the screen. Hi kids! My name is Teacher Plum. And my name is Teacher JC. And welcome to Kids Church for All Ages! First, we want to give a shout out to Seth and Seb Kasipit, Bethany Belen, Jane Miara Hernandez, and Esther Jaira Forte. Also, happy, happy birthday to Kayela Abalos! We finally ended our series called Back to Basics last week. I know! The series was super duper practical. Both kids and adults learned a ah, lot. I agree. Now, I hope you kids won't forget the basic values we learned last month. Don't forget them even when you're all grown up. Alright, so today we are welcoming a new month. And that means... We are welcoming a new series called... We! 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 For the next few weeks, we will be talking about the relationships we have with our siblings, our friends, our parents, and our teachers. And you guessed it! To kick off this series, we'll be talking about our siblings! siblings. How many siblings do you have, Teacher Mom? I have two older sisters, Teacher JC. And how about you? Well, I think we all know. You met my younger brother and younger sister two weeks ago when we played our Nintendo Switch. I know. Oh, speaking of, let's play a game. Ooh. Welcome to the garden! This is where we play games that will potentially be messy. And today, we are going to play the classic egg in spoon race. And to make it more interesting, we will be pretending that these eggs are our siblings. So the rules are, we have to hold the spoon in our mouths and we cannot touch the spoon and the egg with our hands. Whoever gets to the finish line and delivers the egg securely is the winner. Are you ready? Team Plum! Team JC, we will win this! Let's see about that! Three, two, one, go! wasn't expecting that because first of all I run slow and second look at his legs they're so long in my defense <laughs> my shoes were very slippery <laughs> well. but anyway congratulations you were able to transport your siblings the fastest and the gentlest <laughs> you know what teacher Plum it was funny because we didn't want anything to happen to our uh, egg siblings. Yeah, we were very gentle. We didn't want to drop them. The thing is, we should treat our actual siblings with the same care. And that is what we're going to talk about today. Alright, with that, let's watch this video and listen to the word. Hi, my name is Judah and I'm the youngest in our family. I have two brothers named Lucas and Pablo. Pablo likes animation, he does ballet. Lucas likes reading, RPG, and fighting games. Well, I like searching up experimental aircraft and VTOL. If you don't know what VTOL is, it's basically called vertical takeoff and landing. We get along pretty good, but sometimes they get on my nerves. I know you feel that way too with your siblings, right? Or is it just me? During the times when they got on my nerves, my dad reminds me to value them because they're my brothers. My dad told me about the first two brothers in the Bible. 
Cain and Abel. Adam and Eve were the very first people on Earth. Eve gave birth to Cain, then to Abel. Cain and Abel were brothers. Cain grew up to be a farmer, while Abel grew up to be a shepherd. One day, they wanted to say thank you to God. So Cain and Abel gathered up gifts to offer up to God. Cain prepared some fruits and veggies from his farm, while Abel got the best animal from his flock, the fattest firstborn. God liked what Abel brought, and as for Cain's offering, well, let's just say that God wasn't happy about it. This made Cain so angry. God had to talk to Cain just like our parents talk to us when we have tantrums. Why are you angry, Cain? God said. Why do you look so unhappy? If you do what's right, you'll be accepted. But if you do what's wrong, sin is ready to attack you. Sin wants you, but you must control it and be its master. But Cain didn't listen. He let sin control him. Cain asked his brother to go out with him to the field. While they were there, Cain attacked Abel and killed him. This was the first murder ever. And there was a brother killing his brother. Cain allowed sin to be his master. And his brother was his victim. And because of Cain's sin, God cursed and banished him from the ground where he killed his brother. You see, I think what happened here is that Cain valued his anger more than his brother. He was very angry, so he wanted to do something about it, even if that meant hurting or killing his brother. If I were to choose sin or my brother, I would choose my brother. Lucas, Pablo, I value you. Even when they get on my nerves. So we'll see you guys next week. Next week, we're going to be talking about friends. Yeah, everybody, brand new series. We, we, we. Not French for we, but it's we, us. I love this new series. Brand new friends also. Want to say hi to Mark Castillo and to Haley Gershel George. Or is it Jorge? I want to make sure I'm saying that right. But hi to both of you, Haley and Mark. Uh, friends all around. Hi, everybody. We're going to be talking about relationships, friendships. And we picked a doozy this week. We'll be talking about brothers and sisters. Ooh, do you have brothers and sisters? Are you fighting with them? Are you surprised that the one who you're supposed to love the most is the one who's the hardest to love? <laughs> I know, you're probably looking at your brother and sister. Yeah, that's you. Go ahead, look at them. Yeah, that's you, that's you. Well, we'll see what the Bible says about that. And even if you don't have siblings, we can talk about how God wants us to love others. Okay, let's go to a classic Bible story in the book of Genesis, the first book of the Bible, and the classic sibling rivalry story of Cain and Abel. Genesis chapter 4 says this. After that, after Adam and Eve were exiled out of the Garden of Eden, Eve gave birth to Cain's brother Abel. Abel took care of sheep, and Cain became a farmer, All right? Two brothers, different, just like some of us. Later, Cain brought a gift to God. You know, he brought some food that came out of the ground. But Abel brought the best parts of his best sheep. Get that, best of the best. The Lord accepted Abel and his gift, but God didn't accept Cain and his gift. Cain became very angry at that and looked unhappy. So the Lord asked Cain, why are you so angry? Why do you look so unhappy? The Lord asked Cain, why are you so angry? Why are you so unhappy? If you do good, I'll accept you. If you don't do good, well, be careful. Sin is ready to attack you. Sin wants you, but you must rule over it. Because God knows, you know, the giving was an issue of the heart. He was looking at their hearts, not just what they were giving. And Cain said to his brother, Abel, let's go out into the field. And you know what the brother did? And sometimes 
we get so angry. Some, some siblings, you know, get, get so angry at the siblings. And I hope you don't do what Cain did. Because Cain and Abel went into the field. And Cain attacked his brother. And he killed him. The first for anyone ever to die in the Bible, in the history of the world. So later the Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? Cain answered, I don't know. I mean, is it my job to take care of my brother? Then the Lord said, What have you done? Your brother's blood is on the ground. That blood is like a voice that tells me what happened. And now you will be cursed in your work. Your work with the ground will be cursed. It's the same ground where your brother's blood fell. Your hands killed him. Wow. The Bible mentioned that even though Cain brought a gift, God saw his heart. And sometimes our hearts are troubled when it comes to our brothers and sisters, right? I mean, they're our family. We are supposed to be taking care of each other. But some misunderstandings happen. We're so different from one another. We don't understand one another. And sometimes fights can happen. Quarrels can happen. And we get hurt. The people who are supposed to be taking care of one another. Well, that's why God wants to look into our hearts and wants to give us His love. It's not easy to love each other because of how different we are. That's why we have God's love. He doesn't want us to just be looking at ourselves and wanting what we want. You taking it from others, taking it from our brothers and sisters. And I know sometimes we do that. I want to show you some, okay? Look at this. It's a shoe. <laughs> it's my shoe. But it's not really this shoe. One time, it's, it's, it's a shoe of a story. It reminds me of when I borrowed my, my brother's favorite shoe. And I, I forgot to bring it home. I left it there and it got rotten and destroyed at school in, in one of the lockers. And my brother was like, what did you do? Don't you know that was my favorite? I really saved up for that shoe. And I, I was like, it's just a shoe. Well, sometimes that happens with us, right? We don't understand one each other. We don't understand each other's hearts. Well, that's why the point for the lesson for today is I will care for others. How and why? Well, because God cares for them. Let me say that again. I will care for others because God cares for them. God wants us to love each other, especially our brothers and sisters, even though it's not easy, even though they're the closest people who can hurt us even the most. You know, if, you might have heard it said, why do we always get hurt by the ones we love? They're the ones who can hurt us the most, the ones who are closest. And that's why God wants us to love one another. That's why God makes His love available to us so we're able to Love those, even those who hurt us. That lesson is for all of us. For me, for my brothers, for my friends in Singapore, the, the siblings, special siblings. Ilya, Sophia, Lim, Limhenko, Limgenko. I hope I'm saying that right. From Singapore. Mayumi, what a beautiful name. Mayumi and Sinag, Batikados. I hope you and your sister are loving one another. Dan and Daniela Paulino from Canada. All these siblings. Shout out to all the siblings out there. Your brothers. Look at your brother and sister right now. You know, look at them. And no matter how many times you fought with each other, hug each other right now. Hug each other. Do that right now. Would you do that? Would you forgive one another for everything, all the fights you've had, all the misunderstandings? Let God's love shower you right now. As the Holy Spirit is reminding us, I will value the people God placed in my life. Let me say that again. I will value the people God placed in my life. And just as our power verse is saying in Romans chapter 15, may the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus.
that Jesus Christ came down, died for us, and rose again, not so that we could just be guests in their house or some strangers or acquaintances. He did that so we could be, we, you and I, we could be part of His family. You know, we are all brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. That's how much He loved us, even enough to die for us. So if it's hard for us to love our brothers and sisters, let's take hold of God's love. Let's ask for the love of Jesus Christ, even right now. You know, if your brother and sister is with you, why don't you hold their hand? If they're not with you and you're thinking about them, or if you don't have, why don't you put your hand over your heart and close your eyes and say, Lord Jesus, I need your love. Please fill up my empty heart, my hungry heart with your love that I might overflow with love for others, most especially my brothers and my sisters. This we pray to glorify, to give you glory, and give you honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow, I pray for your families. God bless your families. Hello, kids, and welcome back to Craft Time with Teacher Plum. That's me. Before we start, I just wanted to say happy birthday to Alexis Lou Webb from Ohio. And hi to your brother, Nathan Allen. Also, I want to give a shout out to Mira Faith and Mika Hope Calixto. Hi, girls! Anyway, kids, thank you for sending in all your photos from our craft activity last week. Here they are! Last week, we made ant puppets because ants symbolize hard work and diligence. Again, excellent work! So today, we learned about taking care of our siblings, even those who are older than us. I personally have no younger siblings because I am the youngest, but I should still show care and respect to my sisters, Gwen and Janine. So our craft for today is very, very cute, and we are going to be making strollers to represent our baby brothers and sisters. For this craft, we will need one toilet paper core that is already cut in half, so make sure to ask help from your mom or your dad so that they can safely cut the toilet paper core. Another thing we'll be needing is some board paper. I have here white. Also, we will be using some scrap felt paper, but you can use colored paper or a coloring materials or maybe paint, whichever you have at home. We'll also need a pen. I have my pink pen over here, some scissors, and double-sided tape, and of course, coloring materials. Now, let's begin. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to take our board paper and then let's draw two circles. One would be a big circle, almost the size of maybe a saucer at home. And the other one is just a small circle, maybe the size of your toilet paper core. So I already went ahead and drew my circles. I have the big circle over here and the smaller circle beside it. And now we can cut. This is such an easy craft to make kids. And the fun part will be later when we start decorating our strollers. So this is the first circle that I cut out. And the second one is just a tiny circle because this is going to be the head of the baby inside the stroller. 
After that, let's take our bigger circle and let's cut one fourth of the circle. So it doesn't have to be perfect. So imagine you have a pizza and then you just cut one fourth of that pizza. It's gonna look something like this. So this is gonna be our stroller. So this is where the baby lies down and this is the hood of the stroller. The next step is a bit tricky. You need the help of your mom or your dad or maybe your ate or your kuya. So take the toilet paper core pieces and ask your mom or your dad to cut a slit on both toilet paper cores because later we are gonna be inserting this stroller inside those slits. So our stroller will look something like this. It's gonna be able to stand on its own. But we won't assemble it yet because right now, we are gonna start decorating our stroller. To decorate our stroller, you can use recycled cloth like I'm doing right now, or maybe you can use paint or maybe crayons. So I am gonna make my stroller purple and blue. As the base of the stroller, I cut out this from the felt cloth. It's gonna go right over here. And then I cut the smaller half circle and it's gonna be right in the middle of the purple base. So can you see it? It's starting to come to life, right? Next, I also cut a purple base for the hood. And for my hood's design, I cut out scallops from the blue felt cloth. So I'm just gonna assemble this and I'll be right back. So now I finished decorating the stroller's base. So as you can see, we have the blue scallops and then we have this blue decor in the middle of our stroller. You can actually put some stuff inside like maybe a baby bottle or maybe some other cloth or bibs. It's up to you. You can use your creativity. The next thing that we want to do is we want to take the tiny circle that we made and we are going to draw the face of the baby using our crayons. So to draw the eyes and maybe the nose, I'm going to be using the color black. And then just a tiny circle for the mouth. So let's put some hair over here. Babies don't have that much hair. And once you're done decorating that tiny circle with a picture of the baby, you can now just stick it behind the stroller that we made. So look, it looks like he is peeping from the inside of our stroller. I'll use some double-sided tape to secure this. So after sticking the face of the baby on our stroller, we want to put the stroller's handle. And that's just a tiny strip of paper or as I'm using right now, it's blue felt cloth. So take our double-sided tape and just stick this on this one. And now that we have the handle attached, the last step is to finally assemble the stroller and place it on the toilet paper core wheels. So this is where the slit comes in handy. And then the other one, Ta-da! We're now done with our craft. We made craft strollers today to remind us that it is our job to take care of our siblings, even those older than us. We take care of them by watching out for them, by wanting the best for them, by making sure that they don't come to harm or that they're safe. We do this not only because we love them, but because caring for our family honors God. If you don't have a sibling, that's okay. We apply the same principles to our cousins and to our friends. We also want what's best for them, not just for ourselves. So we think about others. And that's it for our craft time for today. I'm really excited to see all your stroller crafts. And if you want to be included in the monthly raffle and the video next week, please send a photo of you and your craft to our email address flashed on the screen. Parents, please take your photos in portrait mode and submit them by Monday, 5 p.m. See you next week, kids! Bye!
sister, where are you? Have you seen my phone? Oh no, my big sister's here. I cracked her phone. I'm in so much trouble. <gasps> oh. <laughs> I'm so sorry, big sister. <laughs> oh, it's okay. I'm sad that you broke my phone. But you know what? I care for you and I love you more. You'll always be my sister. We need to show care to our siblings no matter how many mistakes they make. For our family con, how will you show care to your siblings? Or if you don't have a sibling, to your cousins? Comment down below and discuss it with your family. See you next week. Bye!